Praise God, once again we come to you in the love and presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. To all of you who are watching from all over the world, from Australia to Canada to America to Qatar to Saudi Arabia to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and wherever you are found in the world, we come to you in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are very happy that uh, we can um, partake of the messages and the word of God in this very afternoon. So I would like to uh, talk about something that is very timely and relevant, especially in the times that we are in right now. I am hoping that God will be able to give us a message of hope, a message to look forward to so that we can stay afloat in the midst of the darkness that we are in because I believe that the world is continually plunged into darkness. As I was watching the news yesterday, I saw how terrible it is in India. How I saw how miserable they are in terms of the pandemic that is ravaging their country. And uh, we are one with them. We feel what they feel. Likewise in our home, we don't have to go so far because likewise in our home, we are going through a very dark times. We are going through very dark days. Recently, I have been receiving news about losing people that I know, people that I have been acquainted with, people that I have been with since you know I was a kid. And uh, now they are lost. They are gone just like that and losing someone could be one of the most painful things and it plunges you into darkness it plunges you into hopelessness into questions and confusion and there is one person in the bible he is a prophet he's one of the minor prophets who experienced this same he was plunged into darkness that he began to question god have you ever experienced questioning God and uh, when you did question God have you ever received an answer or has he ever explained himself to you so today we can relate to that because I know that at one point in our lives if we can be honest we have come to a point wherein we questioned God we have come to a point wherein we have lamented of our situation to God. And Habakkuk is one of those prophets in the Old Testament who questioned God. Most of the prophets spoke to the people from God. Most of the prophets spoke to the people for God. But Habakkuk was the other way. Habakkuk spoke to God for the people. Because Habakkuk was one prophet who has seen what is happening around him and he just cannot turn his back. He was somebody who has seen the evils. He is somebody who has seen the wrongdoings. He is somebody who has seen the darkness that was surrounding his society, his nation. He was somebody who has seen the injustice, the misery, Everything that was just going on was going into the wrong direction. And he cannot afford to bear that. He cannot afford to see that. And so he was questioning God. He was talking to God. And uh, if we will begin from Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, this is what prophet Habakkuk said. How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. I, I cry out to you, violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. The law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous, so that justice is perverted. 
That is the lament of Habakkuk to God. He was looking at the situation and he is attentive to the situation that is going around him. He saw the oppression of the weak. He saw the dismissal of the poor. He saw the dishonest and corrupt dealings in the government. He saw the constant fighting and conflicts among his people. He saw the degradation of the moral fabric of his nation. And he could not bear to look at that. That's why he prayed to God. He prayed to God for a long time. That is why he said in uh, verse 2, he said, How long, O Lord, must I call for help? He has said this because he must have been praying for so long. And it seems like nothing is happening. Evil doers have gotten the upper hand. The bad things are overwhelming the good things. And so he said, How long? How long must I cry for help? How long must I call for help? And so we can conclude that Habakkuk must have been praying for so long to be able to say this. He must have been repeatedly calling on to God to intervene, to do something, to set things in order because something is really wrong with the nation. Something is really wrong with the government. Something is really wrong with his uh, surroundings. And so he wanted God to move. He wanted God to save his nation. And so he was not just praying this time, but he was already complaining. And, uh, you know, maybe we can understand Habakkuk because he said, I have been praying for a long time, but nothing seems to be happening. So out of his frustration, out of his hopelessness, out of his distress because of the darkness that surrounds him and his nation, out of confusion and frustration, he called out to God. He lamented to God. He complained to God. And he said, how long? How long can I bear this, O God? You know, there is nothing worse when you are speaking and nobody is listening, isn't it? When you have experience addressing somebody and that person is not even looking at you, he's not looking, he's not even listening, or he's not even responding to you. So Habakkuk must have been in this kind of uh, circumstance and situation. Have you ever seen a um, um, car sticker that says, prayer changes things? Prayer changes things. Napakagandang declaration. Amen? Napakagandang uh, quote. But you know, what about if you have tried praying? If you have tried praying very hard, but nothing changes. Prayer changes things, but you feel like nothing is changing. What are you going to do? What will you do? If, just like Habakkuk, you seem to have very long-standing prayers that have been unanswered. What will you do if you have prayed, Lord, please do this and please do that. Or Lord, please change this or change that. Or Lord, please heal this or heal that. Or fix this, or fix that. Lord, make this right because it is very wrong. Or Lord, please hear me out because I am fighting for injustice here. I am calling out what is wrong. I am in the right. And so please, can you just move and make things right and stop this and stop that? You know, sometimes we pray in that manner. We pray in that way that uh, we, we are, uh, you know, become miserable because it seems like nothing is happening. And so we ask God, can you please act like God? Can you help me out here? Because, you know, I'm praying for something that is not for myself. You know, Habakkuk was praying to God, not in his behalf. He was not asking for a big house or a nice car. He was not asking for fancy clothes or delicious food. He was not asking for a comfortable life. 
He was not asking for success, not even for himself, but he was praying, interceding in behalf of his nation, in behalf of other people. Is that not good? Is that not right? Habakkuk was doing and praying for something that is very, very right. So, out of his frustration, he said, How long, O oh God, have we ever been in that situation? If we could be honest to ourselves, how long until you cure me from this illness? How long until my family is fixed? How long until my marriage is restored? How long until my government, my nation is restored to morality and righteousness? How long until I see the change coming? How long? It is the same frustration echoed by the prophet Habakkuk for what he was seeing around him. His nation was in darkness. And so his life as a prophet was also in darkness. So how did God answer Habakkuk? When Habakkuk said, how long, O God? Because Habakkuk went on to say, you do not hear me. You do not listen to me. That is what Habakkuk said in uh, verse 1. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? God answered in Habakkuk 1.5. This is God's answer. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am doing something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. In other versions, in ESV version, it says, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed, for I am doing a work in your days. This was God's answer. He says, Habakkuk, I am already doing something. I am already doing something. He is already doing. He is already working. But Habakkuk could not see it. Because Habakkuk, in his prayer, has already this preconceived ideas in his heart and in his mind when he prayed to God. He wanted things to change according to his ways. He wanted things to be answered according to his desires. You know, he wanted to change this. He wanted to see inju uh, he wanted to see justice over injustice. He wanted to fix things in his, in his uh, in his nation, but he could not see that God was already working. Why? Because Habakkuk wanted things to be done his way. God tells Habakkuk, watch and see. Watch and see because I will be doing something great and amazing in your lifetime. Let it be a rema for you. If you have been asking from God for something that has been a long-standing prayer, if you have been praying to God, May you be able to see that God has already done something. He is already working something in your life. And that promise is something that is great, something that is amazing in your lifetime. That is what God said to Habakkuk. And you are going to see it even if you do not believe it. Amen. Sometimes in our lives, God is already doing something, but we could not see it. Because we want things to be done the way we want them to be done. We do not give God the liberty to move in our lives. Because if we will see, who are we compared to God? God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. And so if God is already doing something, it is in his own way. And we could not see that because God's ways are not our ways. And that is very explicitly stated in Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 to 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts god's ways are way higher than ours god's omnipotent wisdom omniscient wisdom is way better than ours because we have finite minds we have limited understanding and comprehension of what is happening around us and so if we can only trust god with his wisdom with his omnis omniscience of, of his power of his uh, ability to do things you know in a great and mighty way just as he has declared and promised just like in the life of habakkuk then maybe maybe we could understand the ways of god now let's go back to habakkuk in the context of the israelites and habakkuk's time in this uh book of habakkuk god says he will bring the babylonians to overwhelm judah if we will continue in habakkuk chapter 2 6 to 11 god says i am raising up the babylonians the ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own they are feared and dreaded people they are the law to themselves and promote their own honor their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops headlong. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle, swooping to devour. They all come intent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like sand. They mock kings and scoff at rulers. They laughed at all fortified cities by building earthen rumps. They captured them. Then they sweep past like the wind and go on. Guilty people whose strength is their God. God is saying the Babylonians are an immoral and ruthless people and they are God's instruments for judgment to achieve justice in the nation of Judah. Judah was plunged into corruption, injustice, violence, and all the evils and wrongdoings at that time. And because of that, Habakkuk was so frustrated because everything is just going wrong with this nation. Everything was just going wrong with his people. And so he cried out to God for help. And he, in his cry for help, he was expecting something that God will do according to what he expected God to do. But God has another means. And at this point, God is saying, I am sending the Babylonians to oppress Judah so that they can be my instrument of judgment to achieve justice. What can we take from here? that God, in his perspective, is giving Judah a dose of its own medicine. Judah is into corruption. Judah is into violence. Judah is to in injustice. And that they are oppressing the weak and dismissing the poor and uh, not giving justice to those who are oppressed. So, God is saying that he will use the Babylonians to bring judgment to Judah so that they will realize their own violence, their own injustice. They will give, they will have a taste of their own medicine. That is God's ways. But this was never seen by Habakkuk. So, pinapaliwanag po ng Panginoon na ito ang kanyang pamamaraan para ma-realize ng juda yung kanyang mga evils and wrongdoings, ay ipapadala niya ang mga Babylonians to oppress them because the Babylonians are more ruthless. Amen? The Babylonians are more ruthless than these people. And so, God has been able to uh, put that into uh, perspective in terms of uh, Habakkuk. Now, what did Habakkuk say in, in return to what God's revelation was revealed unto him? In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1, this is what Habakkuk said, I will stand at my watch 
and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Praise God. Because after God answered Habakkuk, my ways are not your ways, Habakkuk. I am doing something. You just cannot see it. Habakkuk took God for his word. What did he say? Okay, God, I will stand on my watch. As a prophet, I will look forward to what you're going to do. I am listening to you. I am looking forward to what you have said you will do. He is looking forward to God's answer. And in so doing, he said, I will stand on the watchtower. I will do my part as a prophet. I will observe continually what is happening in this nation. But this time, I will trust you. But this time, I will put my faith in you that you know better than I do. Amen? Minsan po kasi sa tingin natin, mas magaling po tayo sa Panginoon. Mas magaling tayo sa Diyos. Kaya naman, dapat ganito ang mangyari, dapat ganito ang maganap. We demand from God to let Him do things according to our ways. But mind you, who are you compared to God? Who are we compared to God? We are nothing. God's wisdom is way better. God's wisdom is way, you know, better. Kaya po sa buhay natin, kinakailangan, kagaya po ni Habakkuk, we should have the right attitude and the right answer. When God tells something, we should say, Yes, Lord, I will look forward to what you will do. Now, He is trusting God. Now, he is looking forward to what God will do, even though he cannot still see it. Amen? Hindi pa po niya nakikita kung anong ginagawa ng Panginoon. But he is very willing to go through the process. He is very willing to stand there, you know, in the watchtower and uh, look. He said, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts and I will look to see what God will do. I will look to see what God will do and what answer I am going to get from my complaint. Amen. So he, he acknowledges that God now knows what he's doing. And so he just have to trust him. Sa buhay po natin, magkaminsan marami po tayong hindi nakikita. Marami po tayong hindi nauunawaan. Kaya magkaminsan, nararamdaman natin yung frustration. Nararamdaman natin yung kawalan. Nararamdaman natin yung kadiliman. Amen? Hanggang kailan? Kagaya ni Habakuk, nagtatanong tayo, hanggang kailan ako magsasuffer? Hanggang kailan ako mananatili sa ganitong pain at kalalagayan? Hanggang kailan ako maghihintay? And I can feel you if you are having that kind of frustration. But may it be that when God says something, I am doing something, Abako. May we believe and trust God that He's really doing something in our lifetime. That we will be able to see what He has promised. Something that is great. Something that is amazing. And so at this time when Habakkuk heard the voice of God, his spirit was quickened. He is no longer this gloomy, complaining, grumbling, wallowing prophet. But now his mood was turned from gloom and doom to a glimmer of hope. That is why my message for this afternoon is entitled, Hope in the Midst of Darkness. Because you might be in darkness right now. I don't know what your particular circumstance is, but I know Every one of us is fighting a battle. Every one of us is going through a very difficult circumstance considering that this pandemic has caused a lot of troubles and miseries to a lot of people. Many people lost their loved ones. Many people lost their jobs. Many people lost their businesses. And many people are suffering through mental torture and mental anxiety and misery because of uncertainties of what the future may hold. 
And maybe we are asking the same questions like Habakkuk. How long will this pandemic last? How long? One year after we thought we could have had a breakthrough, but we're back to square one. And even worse, people are dying every day. Hospitals are full to capacity. Our healthcare system is on the verge of collapse and breakdown. So this darkness is plunging us into hopelessness. What do we do? What do we do? We cry out to God and say, how long? I wish I could answer you. I wish I could give you a very specific and definite answer. But in my finite mind and understanding, I really don't know how long. But God said, I am doing something. So even if we do not see what God is doing, can we just trust God? Because God is a trustworthy God. Numbers 23, 19, God is not a human. God is not a man that he could lie. God is God and he never lies. And so, in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, the Lord continued on, to say, write down the revelation, Habakkuk, and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come. And will not delay. God himself is talking with this message. The Lord is saying, write down the revelation. For your future references, write down the promises of God. Write down the scriptures. Write down the word of God for your future references. Because there might come a time that you will be frustrated that you will not believe anymore, that you will turn away, that you will turn your back from your faith because you have been waiting long enough and that you just gave up. And so God's advice through prophet Habakkuk is that you write down the revelation because sometimes we forget them. Sometimes we deliberately forsake them. And so Write down the promises of God. Put them in your walls. In the Old Testament, put them, you know, on your forehead. Ilagay daw po sa ating mga forehead. So that what? We will not forget and continue to hold on to it. Make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. Amen? A messenger, a herald may run with it. So, ano pong sinasabi rito? Run with your vision. Run with the promises of God. Do not wallow and stagnate. Do not, you know, remain in that situation of frustration, of misery, of darkness. But run with your faith. Run with your vision. So that a herald may run with it. Run, brethren. You may... F the, the book of Isaiah said, you know... You may feel weak sometimes, but you spread your wings and be like an eagle and fly, you know. For sometimes we might grow weak and weary. We might grow weak and weary, but the Bible says, run. Amen. Stand up. Run with the vision. Do not wallow in pain and misery. Do not remain in the darkness, but have that glimmer of hope. Because God's promises are true. God's words are true. So, aside from the command to write down these promises of God, this revelation of God, this vision that God has given you, nung tinawag ka ng Panginoon, God has given you this grand vision that He will be using you mightily, you know, in these last days. But somewhere, somehow, you have fallen away. From the grace of God. So does that vision still stand? 
Does the promise of God, does the calling of God still stand in your life? It does because God's callings and giftings are irrevocable. Hindi po ito nagbabago. Ano man ang nangyari sa buhay mo, ano man ang naganap sa buhay mo, ang pagkakatawag mo ay hindi nagbabago. Ang pag-ibig sa iyo ng Diyos ay hindi nagbabago. And so God wants you to continue to run with it. You might have fallen, nadapa ka, ikaw ay uh, nag fall away from the tracks of your journey, of your race. But you can always go back and run again. Run with the vision, run with the promises, run with your calling, fight for your calling. That is what God wants you to do. And, and fight for your faith. Sometimes you have unbelief. Sometimes you are attacked by the enemy, deceived by the enemy, not to believe anymore. But God is saying, run with your faith. Run with your vision. Run with the promises of God. Do not give up. Amen. Now, let's continue on. Aside from running with the vision, God is saying in verse 3 of Habakkuk chapter 2, For the revelation awaits an appointed time. Awaits an appointed time. The, here's the rub. It is very easy to believe on the promises of God. People say, I believe in the promises of God 100%. I have faith that God will uh, is true to His promises. But the rub, here's the rub. Habakkuk is told to wait. And sometimes the waiting game is uh, the difficulty for most people. Ito po yung mahirap. They can run with the vision. They can run with the with, the, with their faith. They can run with the promises of God. But for how long? How long am I going to run? How long until this ends? Okay? But God is saying, wait. That is a very specific message of God for you now. Wait. A few weeks ago, I had this very vivid dream. In my dream, God said, wait. Very audible. God said, wait. And I woke up in, from that dream and, and said, God, you want me to wait. I, I don't even know what am I waiting for. Maybe specifically according to the rank of, of my priorities. I, I have a lot of prayer requests from God, for God. But God is just saying, wait. Amen. And I pray that today... God will also make it a rema in your heart to wait. And more so, in verse 2 or verse 4, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by faith. There is a parallel verse for that in Romans 1.17. The just shall live by faith. We are not only told to wait. We are also told to live by faith. And there's the rub. Because living by faith means believing even if you don't see. Living by faith means Believing even if you don't feel. Living by faith means believing even if it seems impossible. And there are many impossibilities in our lives. In our own perspective, it is very impossible for you to be cured of cancer. It is impossible for you to be delivered from addiction. It is impossible for you to be restored from your misery, anxiety, and mental torture. There are so many impossibilities in your lives which you have accepted and which you have believed. But in verse 4, the Bible is telling us, Habakkuk is telling us, the enemy is puffed up and his desires are not upright. So all of these negative thoughts are from the enemy. All of these doubts and unbeliefs are from the enemy. But God is telling us to believe even if we do not see. God is telling us to believe even if we do not feel. 
God is telling us to believe even if it seems impossible. And you are telling me right now, you can say that because you are not in my situation. You don't feel my pain when this cancer is attacking me. I am in darkness. I am suffering alone. You don't feel my pain. What I feel is that it is painful. And now you're telling me I have to believe even if, you know, I feel pain. Yes, brethren. I don't know. I can't even explain how. But, you know, waiting and believing is a very integral part of our Christian life, of our faith. Because many people fail to continue in their journey in following the Lord, in obeying the Lord, because they have been impatient. They could not wait. And so, they have turned their backs away from God. But as I told you, God is a faithful God. When God promises, He fulfills it. Numbers 23, 19, as I've mentioned a while ago, God is not human that He should lie, not a human being that He should change His mind. Does He speak and then not act? Does He promise and not fulfill? Joshua 21:45. Not one of all of the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Not one failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Brethren, God has a very good track record in terms of fulfilling His promises. Joshua 21.45 says, Every one of God's promises was fulfilled. To the Israelites. Ezekiel 12 28. Therefore say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says None of you or none of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the sovereign Lord. Amen. Ano rang po, ano raw po ang sinabi ng Dios? Tutu parin niya ito. May sinabi ba sa yo ang Dios? Tutu parin niya ito. Sa pagkat hindi. Sinungaling ang Diyos. Sinabi niya po sa kanyang uh, pagkamatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, it is finished. When he was wounded for our transgressions, when he was bruised for our iniquities, and by his wounds, we are healed. Those are promises. Those are truths that we can cling on to. And those were not spoken by any other man. Those were spoken by God himself. That's why if God has spoken them, we can trust them. We can put our faith in them, in these promises, even though you still cannot see it, even though you still cannot feel it. Yun po ang tinatawag na faith. Faith is believing in something that you have not seen. Faith is believing in something even if you do not feel like it is already happening in your life. That is faith. So, to, to, to have faith means, you know, to be patient, to hope. You know, in, in the Bible, to wait means, literally means to suffer. To wait means, literally means to suffer, to be patient. You know, while you are waiting, you, you might be suffering. While you are waiting, you might be going through a very, very difficult circumstances. But even so, God wants us to live by faith. God wants us to hope. Hoping is not a wishful thinking, just like when you say, I hope you are okay, or I hope you are fine, I hope you have a good day, I hope you will succeed you know, in this project or in this endeavor. But these are good wishes. you know. As I said, to hope, according to the Bible, is not wishful thinking it is not based on uncertain wishes but our hope is something that is anchored on something that is sure something that is solid something that is certain and that is god himself and his word ang dios mismo ang anchor ng ating pananampalataya ang kanyang salita ang ating pinaninindigan na pinagbabasihan ng ating pananampalataya, ng ating pag-asa. 
Kaya, to, to hope is not a wishful thinking, but it is something that is based on God and His very word, His very promises. So, during the days of Habakkuk, when Judah was plunged into darkness, and Habakkuk was questioning God, why are not you doing anything, God? You know, you are God, you're powerful, but uh, why can't you do anything about this situation? In Romans 8.28, alam ko po alam ng maraming kristyano ito, at paborito ng maraming kristyano, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. So, many people cling on to this word, Romans 8.28. And as they cling on to this word, they begin to think, like, Romans 8.28, all things work together for good. Where is the good? I only see bad things. All things work together for good, like my healing. But where is my healing? I can only see and feel pain. All things work together for good, like answers to my prayers. But where is the answer to my prayer? I can see this virus continually ravaging the world, ravaging the earth. I can see this virus killing people. Like in India, 350,000 infections a day and 4,000 deaths a day. Where is the good? Where is the good? Nasaan ang mabuti? But if we will see the context of Romans 8.28, this was written by Paul in his time in the midst of his suffering. He was put into jail. He was shipwrecked. He was persecuted by the Romans. They wanted to kill him. They wanted him to die because he was a faithful, devoted follower of Jesus. And so if we will see the context, when Paul wrote Romans 8.28, it was not in a very rosy situation, not a very good situation, but it was in the midst of the darkness in his life, when he was suffering, when he was in pain, when he was in total pitch darkness in his life. That is when Paul declared, all things work together for good. He had that glimmer of hope in the midst of his darkness. He had this glimmer of hope waiting for the fulfillment of God's promises. He did not complain. Instead, he said, you know, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Even if he dies for the sake of Christ, he has accepted it. That is his fate. That is his destiny. That's how great this Paul, Apostle Paul was because in the midst of his darkness and suffering, he was able to declare things are going to get better. Things are going to get good. All things work together for good to those who love God. In our lives, we think that you know because we love God, we obey God, nothing bad can happen to us. But as I have taught in the last message that I have had, shared with you, Noah, when he uh, was commanded by God to build the ark, it was in the midst of chaos and uh, judgment of God upon this earth because the earth was so wicked and the people were so wicked and unrighteous. God did not separate Noah from the world, but in the midst of the world, God said, build an ark because that ark is his place of safety and security likewise in our lives this pandemic is ravaging the world and we are still in the world how can we come out safe out of this pandemic how can we stay afloat in our faith in the midst of this pandemic where is the hope in the dark let us anchor our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because 2,000 years ago he said on the cross it is finished 
the finished work of the Son of God, Jesus Christ on the cross, is our anchor. This is where we can put our faith that in the midst of darkness, we can have a glimmer of hope. So whatever you are going through right now, in Romans 5, 8 says, God demonstrated his own love to us in that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ died for us even when we were sinners. That's how unconditional his love is. So if there is somebody who knows injustice, it is the Son of God, Jesus, because he was put on the cross and hung on the cross without any, any sin and offense. He was tried in an unjust manner. So if, there, if you're talking about injustice here, there's no other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself who has suffered the gravest of injustice. He suffered, he died, he went, in, he went into the depths of darkness when he died for three days. But on the third day, he brought this darkness into light when he resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah. And that is the same hope that we can anchor on. That is the same truth that we can put our hopes on. That Jesus Christ, through the tragedies of life, through the sufferings of life, through the darkness of life, we can have hope. We can have hope. We can live by faith. Habakkuk said, the just shall live by faith. So whatever you are going through right now, brethren, I know that, you know, the words are not enough to comfort you, to console you maybe because you have just lost a loved one. Words are not enough to explain to you that God sees your pain. God feels your pain because he went through it on the cross. God died for you. That's how he loved you. And so if you can only put your hope in the truth that God loves you, then I pray that today you will find hope and not get frustrated and not Turn your heart and back from God because you have been through a lot. No matter how long you have been praying for something, please believe that the promises of God are true and these promises are trustworthy. So sa buhay po natin, anuman pong pinagdadaanan natin ngayon, nasa gitna po tayo ng kadiliman, nasa gitna po tayo ng kahirapan, nasa gitna po tayo ng kawalan, nasa gitna po tayo ng kahinaan, Nawa po'y masumpungan natin ang pag-asa sa ating Panginoon. We can come out of this in victory because our God is a God of victory. So right now, let us put our hope in God. Let us put our trust in God. Whatever you are going through right now, cancer, sickness, disease, COVID-19, joblessness, bankruptcy, mental torture, anxiety, whatever cancer you have, I don't know what particular circumstances that you are going through right now that you can say how long oh god will i be going through this suffering how long oh god may it be that we will learn from habakkuk when god says run with the vision run with the messenger run put on the promises of god write them in tablets in plain tablets and wait for surely it will come Wait for surely they will happen. God's promises will happen in your life. It may tarry. It may take a little time. But it will surely come. It will surely come. So your waiting, you know, it will all be rewarded because God has promised it will come. And as we are waiting and waiting and waiting, God wants us to live by faith. To believe even if we do not see. To believe even if we do not feel. So I pray right now that God will come to you and touch you. And strengthen you. And enable you. Because you are already losing your hope. You are already, you know, in pitch darkness. That you are in pain. So much pain. And I pray with the miraculous hand of God. He will strengthen you. He will restore you. 
He will heal you. He will cure you in the name of Jesus. Come on, reach out to God. Just like Habakkuk, you say, how long, O God? And the Lord is saying, it will happen. It will come. Believe. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, by what he has done on the cross, when he said, it is finished, whatever you need from God, receive in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have fallen away from the grace of God, repent. Come into the grace of God and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for my sins. I have pride. I have indulged in immorality. I have indulged in addiction. I have had doubts and unbeliefs of your promises. I have backslidden whatever iniquity that you can see in my heart. Forgive me, Lord, and cleanse me. And today make me worthy to stand in your presence. Enable me and give me the grace to run with the vision that you have given me. Give me the ability and the grace to believe your promises. Because I am weak, but you are strong in my life. And so right now, God sees you and God is willing and able to touch you and reach out to you. So raise your two hands, to both hands to God and receive the very presence of God in your life. Whatever you need from God, healings, miracles, financial breakthrough. You are praying for something for a long time. You have long standing and answered prayers. Now is the time that God is granting you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, I pray you grant long standing and answered prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And by what you have done on the cross, by your wounds and by your bruises on the cross, oh God, heal people in Jesus' mighty name. Panginoon, palayain mo sa pagdadialysis. Palayain mo, Panginoon, sa pagwiwikin ng mga muscles and bones. Palayain mo, Panginoon, sa mga uh, sakit na hindi gumagaling kagaya ng cancer sa pangalan ni Jesus. Palayain mo, Panginoon, Ang mga taong nakikinig ngayon, nagsusumamo, humihingi ng tulong, Ama. Tuparin mo ang iyong pangako, tuparin mo ang iyong salita. Magsigaling, Panginoon, ng mga may sakit. At umahon sa kahirapan, Ama, yaong mga nahihirapang lubha sa pangalan ni Jesus. At ano man ang kailangan mo ngayon, sabihin mo sa Diyos, because God is willing and able to touch you and answer your prayers. Yes! It may tarry a little while, but it will come, saith the Lord. Run with the mission, run with the vision, run with the mandate, run with your calling. Be faithful, do not turn away, do not lose your faith, do not doubt God, but believe God. Because God will do it. He will surely do it. Because God is not a man that he should lie, but he is God who is omnipotent, omniscient omnipresent God and so just receive your miracles and healings right now in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God and now God has given you this hope in your heart God has quickened your spirit you are no longer doomed you are no longer gloomy and wallowing in pain and misery but God is giving you the great joy that comes from the very heart of God Hallelujah. Just receive the joy and the peace of God that will make you, that will sustain you and in overcome all these things that are happening around you. When Paul was in darkness and misery, he put his hope in God. And likewise, God is telling you, put your hope in him. Put your trust in him because he is a willing and able God to do what is amazing and great in your lifetime. Father, I seal every miracle, every healing, every answered prayer right now by the blood of Jesus and let your people enjoy it because you have willed it, you have promised it, and you have made it come to pass in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, Receive your healing, receive your blessing, receive the very presence and victory of God in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, 
Amen and amen. So today, praise God, I know that God has done something great, miraculous, amazing, and wonderful in your life. If you are being touched by God to bless His ministry, you are very most welcome. You will find in our page, KOJF page, how to be able to send your love gifts and offerings. This is not a payment for the message, but it is an opportunity for you to become partners in the advancement of the gospel of the kingdom of God in these last days. And the Bible says, if you give, you will receive because you can never outgive God. If you bless the ministry of God, the true ministry of God, God will give it back to you. Amen. A hundred folds because God can never be outgiven. And so I encourage you, if you have been blessed by the Lord, you can bless his ministry as well so that we can be partners in continually advancing and propagating the gospel of the kingdom of God. So uh, you can uh, call us and you can uh, look at how and the means of, of, of giving and offering your resources to God. So praise God. And uh, once again, we thank you for your faithfulness in following this ministry. We thank you for your hunger and thirst for the revelation of the word of God because God continually wants to give you his guidance and his messages so that, as I've said, we can, you know, stay afloat in these last days and continue to hope for his coming glory. So sa buhay po ng lingkod ng Diyos, mula po sa lingkod ng Diyos, Apostle Ricardo Carillo, myself and our children, John Emmanuel Carillo, John Joshua Carillo, and John Joseph Carillo, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your generosity. We thank you for your love, prayers, and support. And it will be God who will give you back what you have given to us and to the ministry. So, once again, let's see each other for the next uh, messages, which will be every Wednesday, like today, and every Friday at 5 p.m., and on Sundays, 10 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon for our Sunday worship services. So, praise God and to God be the glory.